Welcome back. Here we go. The thing that allowed Node to be so successful is the ability to run JavaScript code asynchronously. And doing this in such a way that developers like you and I could focus on our application and solving interesting problems rather than worrying about complicated multi threading logic. We've learned that JavaScript is a single threaded language. So if it's not threads, then how does Node allow us to execute code asynchronously? Does Node add threads to JavaScript and just do a really good job of hiding them? Well, Node executes JavaScript code. So it has to follow how the language works in being single threaded. In Node, we have one main thread. This one thread runs the V8 engine, our JavaScript code, including the Node APIs, as well as a super important part of libuv, which is the event loop. We'll get to the event loop in a moment, but a blocking function in any of these components will cause our JavaScript to block, halting execution of our program until that blocking function completes, which is not great. But that's not the whole story. For a complete picture, we need to take a better look at our favorite library, libuv. We've seen that libuv handles our input output functionality. Specifically, libuv handles the two main types of IO file system operations, like the functions in our FS module as well as the other most common form of I.O., which is network operations. We're able to execute all of these functions asynchronously thanks to this event loop. This event loop is code in libuv that runs our asynchronous functions and executes the corresponding callback when the result of the function is ready. In Node, any time we call an asynchronous function from JavaScript, it gets put on that event loop. This applies to our asynchronous network and file system operations. So all of our JavaScript code is running on the main thread. And any asynchronous functions are put on the event loop, which then goes off and tells your operating system to run the asynchronous function, notifying the event loop when the result is ready. It's kind of like your boss deciding when your code executes and getting notified when the work is complete. It continually listens for new events and delegates this work that we don't want blocking our main thread. Now, where does the work that gets put on the event loop actually get completed? Who are the employees or the workers that help the event loop get things done? There are two main options. Some tasks, things that tend to involve the network, like talking to servers over the internet, are done directly in your operating system. While other tasks, like reading a file, are done in what's called the thread pool. Let me explain. Inside of libuv, we have this pool of threads, 
or in other words, a group or a collection of threads, which are set up ahead of time and are available to take on work as it comes in. Remember, libuv is written in the C programming language, which does have threads. So our thread pool takes advantage of that. The threads in our thread pool are just like the threads in our process. There's one for the main thread that's executing V8, as well as the event loop, and there's a few threads, four by default, that are ready and waiting in our thread pool, with each of them able to handle one task at a time. We have a limited set of these threads that are available to take on work that are reused throughout the life cycle of our Node.js program. This saves our CPU from doing the additional work of creating and destroying new threads for every task that comes in. If we run out of available threads on our thread pool, well, we just have to wait for a task to complete before our thread pool is available again. So how does everything fit together? For file system operations, which use the thread pool, libuv would send the work to one of the threads where it would run through what it needs to do independently of all the other threads in our application, including the main thread, which is running our JavaScript code. So this would happen in the background. And when the operation completes, the event loop would get notified of the result, executing the corresponding callback and making sure that our application is running smoothly. But there's something worth noting. Only some operations use this thread pool. There's a common misconception, even with experienced node developers, that all asynchronous functions are executed in the thread pool. Node actively tries to avoid this because, well, threads are more complex and use up the limited resources of our thread pool. Instead, where possible, libuv uses the operating system directly, specifically the operating system kernel which is the core part of the operating system that talks to the computer's hardware and has multiple threads of its own. The kernel is really good at doing these basic operations, like talking to other computers over the network, using its own capabilities. Whenever the right functionality already exists in your operating system, libuv will just make the appropriate call, saving us from using the valuable resources of our thread pool. And so for most asynchronous operations, we skip over this thread pool. When our operation finishes running in the operating system, the event loop will receive the signal and execute any callback functions. All of this is what allows the Node.js environment to run asynchronous code. And it's what Node adds on to what JavaScript offers as a language. The fact that Node uses JavaScript, which is a single threaded language, may sound like a disadvantage, but it's actually one of Node's biggest strengths. It means that as a Node developer, you never have to worry about managing multiple threads. 
which simplifies how you write code. Node already knows who should do the work to get the job done. So as a developer, you don't have to think about it. It's only the code behind Node and the code behind your computer's operating system that internally has multiple threads and uses those threads to perform input and output tasks. It's these internals that allow Node to do its famous non-blocking I.O. that it's so famous for doing really well. And ultimately, this is what led us all here to using Node in our applications and wanting to learn all about it. All right, until the next one, bye-bye.